Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Today I will make another negative painting. Uh, this is the third one in this series. So if you enjoy this technique, I recommend you to check out my other videos. As usual, I tape down uh, my paper to keep it flat and uh, I have created a Pinterest board um, where I will be taking photos and gathering references. Feel free to join it and um, take inspiration and use them for your artworks. And this is going to be uh, today's reference. I will start by sketching out outlines of our first layer. So in this technique, we will be painting um, behind each layer to create a sense of depth. Um, so because of that, we don't want to cover our first layer with too many details. So we need to leave some uh, space uh, for adding our uh, other layers to the background. So I uh, first have a, a draft of sketch and then I will go in and add details and um, yeah, finalize the sketch. I'm using a masking fluid to cover areas with flowers because I don't want to have paint on them. I want to keep them um, white. Um, and I'm using a craft brush, an inexpensive one. Uh, so when masking fluid dries, it becomes like a layer of latex and it can be a bit cruel on the bristles. Um, and this can happen to your brush. I have realized a uh, turpentine would help cleaning the brush very well. I have tried many other techniques, um, but this so far, uh, has been the most successful so if you're going to use masking fluid pay attention to this part how to clean your brush otherwise it will be very frustrating to work with and for painting the background i first wet the paper this is after masking fluid has completely dried i leave it for like 10 to 15 minutes um, so i first wet the paper with uh, clean water and then start adding my paint. I'm using uh, lighter greens like grass green, lemon yellow uh, to create a soft uh, first layer and adding water before uh, applying paint will let you create this nice uh, blurry background and colors will naturally sort of blend in together and uh, this is a technique that I use a lot in my paintings. It's called a wet on wet um, technique because paper is wet and then you apply wet paint. So because of that, it's called wet on wet technique. So now it's time to dry our first layer and I do that with a hairdryer. Suddenly I realize I have too much water on the surface. So I tilt the paper a bit to move around the paint and I go in and dry it. And after it has dried, I feel like the paint or the first layer is too light. So I wet it again um, and add some more of the same colors, the light green ones, and then dry again. Um, and at this point, when it has completely dried, it's time to start adding paint to the background. So instead of filling in shapes, I'm painting in the background, painting the outside. And this is how you create this sense of depth and three-dimensionality, <laughs> it's hard to pronounce that word, um, as if like our top layer is casting shadows on the layers in the background. And you know, this technique requires a lot of patience. Uh, take your time, don't rush it. I think I painted this one in five hours. I didn't do it all in one sitting. I did half of it in one day and the rest of it in another day. 
um, so take your time and I can understand that like um, creating these nice outlines uh, painting the edges can be also a bit tricky uh, but don't worry that much at this um, in this step because at the end we will do some corrections and uh, fix the sort of outlines or edges Now it's time to dry this layer again and uh, after that I'm drawing in another layer of leaves and these I do draw in the background as you can see again leaving some empty space in between for the other layer and I use a smaller brush this time because uh, the areas, uh, the free areas in between are much smaller than before so it's easier to control the paint with a smaller brush and again I uh, paint the background instead of painting in shapes <music> So after this layer has also completely dried, uh, I'm adding the third layer of leaves to the background again. Um, but I realized camera is not actually capturing the sketches. So I decided to go in and paint straight in the outlines. So for each layer, I'm darkening the green. And here at this point, I want to have a almost black green i don't like using black in my paintings uh, instead for this uh, for this one i'm uh, mixing some prussian green with some prussian blue or indigo so a bit of uh, dark blue together with dark green putting it in uh, simple words <laughs> um and again i'm painting in between shapes i'm painting in the background um, and as you go you can see that you have smaller uh, areas or less space left so it's a good idea to use a smaller brush for each layer
Now it has again completely dried and time to remove the masking fluid and work on some details. Uh, for that, I uh, use a regular era eraser um, to rub it off. Um, and yeah, I use a clean brush to remove any uh, thing that is left on the paper. It's much better than using your hands. And now I am going to add details to my flowers using a smaller brush. So at this point, I was struggling a bit with uh, my technique. Uh, I wanted to add veins to this uh, leaf, but I couldn't really get it right. So I had to try out a bit of different like brush directions and movements. Um, so what I'm doing here now is I add a bit darker areas inside of veins and leaving some uh, empty spaces in between and this is the process of painting you know you figure out things as you go you learn in every painting and here for this one I finally think like figured out so it was much easier um, with this way of holding the brush and uh, painting in and as you can see, I'm leaving out spaces in between. This is uh, one of the important techniques in watercolor. And now I'm using a rigger brush for adding veins to these other leaves. So I'm working in an opposite technique because these are two different kinds of plants that live together. So Pay attention to these small details, take photos and uh, learn from the nature. So for this one, I'm using a darker color to paint in uh, veins, whereas for the other one, I left areas with the veins in a lighter color and painted the outside. Um, it's a bit hard to put it in word, but... Yeah, you can probably see the differences here. And at this point, I felt like these uh, rounded uh, leaves were looking a bit plain. So after the vein layer had dried, I take some of the darker greens and very, very lightly paint in between the veins um, yeah, to create some color dynamic and make it look more natural and less flat, of course. And now I pick some light blue like a sky blue um, and add it to the flowers to make them look a bit more three-dimensional. So it's like adding some shadows to make them pop.
And now it's time to add some final shiny detail. I'm using this gold watercolor paint from Rosa, which I recently bought and I'm really happy with it. Um, and I have to also say sorry because I um, lost some of my footage for this part. So I cannot include the whole uh, painting process for these um, shiny details. Uh, so our painting for today is uh, finished. I hope you enjoyed watching and if you did, please give it a thumbs up to support this channel.